نحمده ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى صدق الله العظيم The surah which I recited right now is Surah Al-Duha which was revealed on the Holy Prophet peace be upon him in Makkah life During the Holy Prophet peace be upon him's life in Makkah there was a long unusual break in revelations in which his enemies started taunting the Holy Prophet peace be upon him and they started saying that Allah has forsaken him and Allah is has become unhappy with him and Umm Jamil the wife of Abu Lahab who was one of the worst enemies of Islam she came to the Holy Prophet and said Nauzubillah Muhammad What happened to the shaitan who used to make verses for you and then you used to claim that it is coming from Allah? And the other enemies of the Holy Prophet said, Muhammad, you must have done something wrong. That's why Allah has become unhappy with you and he is not going to communicate with you anymore. And the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, had no answer of their objections because he had no idea why the revelations had stopped. So when they crossed all the limits in taunting the Holy Prophet peace be upon him and making his life miserable with their uh, remarks about the Holy Prophet so Allah sent down surah ad-duha to console his messenger and to answer the objections of Quraysh about him In the first three ayat of this surah Allah answered the objections of Quraysh Allah said by the glorious morning light and by the night when it overspreads Allah has not forsaken you and Allah is not unhappy with you. Why Allah is saying that swearing up by the morning light and by the darkness of night Allah is saying that Allah has not forsaken you. The connection is said the coming of the revelations is just like the daylight and the break in revelations is just like the darkness of night. So when Allah takes away the daylight and throws the world into the darkness of night we don't say that Allah has become unhappy with mankind that's why Allah has taken away the light but we know that it is a part of system we cannot be exposed to the daylight constantly we need rest we need darkness as well similarly Allah stopped the revelations to give rest to holy prophet peace be upon him because he could not be exposed to the light of revelations constantly he could not bear it because we know that whenever the revelations came to holy prophet peace be upon him he used to sweat profusely his body used to become very heavy and it was not easy for him to receive the revelations so allah wanted to give some rest to holy prophet peace be upon him so when the darkness of night is not the sign of allah's displeasure with mankind so how can we say that the break in revelation was a sign of allah's displeasure with his messenger but this the same thing the break in revelation was a sign of allah's affection and allah's care for his messenger that he did not want to overburden him and in the remaining part of the surah allah consoled his messenger allah said wal al akhiratu khairul lakum min al ula that the hereafter is better for you than the present akhirah means the thing which comes later the surah was revealed in makkah so we can say that akhirah refers to the life of the holy prophet peace be upon him in medina so allah is consoling his messenger that muhammad don't worry if you are suffering so many difficulties and opposition in makkah life because future is yours and you will get the reward of these efforts and these sacrifices in near future in medina and there is no doubt that the life of the holy prophet in medina was far better than his makkah life because in medina he got the freedom of religion and he became the head of the state of medina and his mission fulfilled in medina so allah is saying to the holy prophet that this tough life of makkah will finally come to an end and in near future you will have your future your future is bright the word akhirah can also refer to the life of the holy prophet peace be upon him in akhirah in the next world and there is no doubt that akhirat for holy prophet peace be upon him will be far better than the worldly life because in akhirah holy prophet peace be upon him will be the first one to enter paradise and the holy prophet peace be upon him will be given the permission of shafa'a 
he will be honored with maqami mahmud and he will be given river kawsar and there are lots of things which allah has kept for him in akhira so allah is consoling the holy prophet peace be upon him that this life this worldly life is a place of trials and tribulations so you should remain patient and you should remember that akhirat is years where allah will honor you and allah will reward you for all the sacrifices you have making for allah's religion allah also consoled his messenger in the surah in another way that allah reminded some events of his past allah said alam yajidka yatim an fa'awa that muhammad don't you remember that you were an orphan and we gave you shelter The shelter over here refers to Hazrat Abu Talib who became the guardian of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him after the death of his grandfather and he treated him so well that the Holy Prophet peace be upon him did not feel that his father is not there he loved him like his father and he loved him even more than his real children so the arrangement was obviously made by Allah that who poured so much love of the holy prophet into the heart of Abu Talib that he loved him like his real son and Allah said wa wajada qaddal an fahada and he found you wandering and he gave you guidance it refers to the holy prophet peace be upon him meditations in the cave of fira when the holy prophet peace be upon him was searching for the true path and Allah gave him the guidance by revealing the holy quran on him fahada means that Allah sent down the Quran to you and gave you the guidance towards the right path and gave you the knowledge you were looking for and then Allah reminded him wa wajada ka'ilan fa'aghna that he found you in need and he made you independent the holy prophet peace be upon him was not financially strong he didn't get much wealth from his father as inheritance and hazrat abu talib was also not very rich so he was in financial support in need of the financial support and Allah gave him that support in the form of his marriage with Hazrat Khadija because Hazrat Khadija placed all of her wealth on the disposal of the holy prophet peace be upon him and he became financially independent so Allah is reminding these things over here to the holy prophet peace be upon him that Muhammad we were with you in all stages of your life so how can we leave you now after appointing you as our messenger and after giving you the holy quran so don't pay any attention to the remarks of the makkan people who are saying that Allah has forsaken you Allah is always with you as he was with you in all the previous stages of your life Allah is with you even at times that it seems that he is not with you so you should never feel alone and you should never feel that Allah has forsaken you it is impossible Allah has a strong relationship with you the surah contains some of the very important lesson for muslims first of all the surah teaches us that everything happens according to Allah's plan sometimes we don't understand the wisdom of Allah behind Allah's planning but there is always some wisdom for example over here Allah stopped the revelations to holy prophet peace be upon him and there was a wisdom that Allah wanted to give some rest to his messenger and the holy prophet peace be upon him was not understanding it at that time but it was made clear by Allah later that it was all done according to Allah's wisdom and that was the rest of the holy prophet peace be upon him so whenever something happens in our life in which we feel that that thing is not good for us so we should always accept it with as a decision of Allah and we should remember that there is always some wisdom behind it there are things in life in which we have no control so when something is happening in our life in which we have no control so we should remember that it is due to Allah's planning and we should accept it with patience and we should not object on Allah's planning there There is another important lesson which Allah gave to his messenger that wal al akhiratu khairul lak min al ula that we have to focus on akhirah we should remain patient on the worldly difficulties and trials this world is a place where we cannot get everything this is not the world where we can enjoy the luxuries but it is a place where we have to face the difficulties and challenges and we have to face the trials and tribulations but we have to focus on akhirah if we are going to be successful in akhirah so that will be the real success for us and there is another lesson in the surah that we should not forget our past allah also reminded the holy prophet peace be upon him his past that when he was nothing but allah gave him so many blessings 
and the same thing happens in the life of almost every person. If we look in our past, we were nothing and Allah has given us so many blessings of the passage of time. So when we remember our past, it makes us thankful to Allah. It's a human nature that we always look forward, we look towards the future and we want to achieve something in our future. And that thing is delayed if we are unable to get things on time, so we become ungrateful to Allah, which is not a good thing. But a person should remember the past, it will bring him closer to Allah and it will make him more thankful to God. And in the end of this surah, Allah also gave us some ethical teachings in which Allah said, So the orphan do not ill-treat him. Allah said to his messenger that Muhammad you were an orphan and we gave you shelter so if any other orphan comes to you so you should also help him. Similarly that you were in need of financial support and we gave you that support if any other beggar comes to you so you should also help him and do not return him empty handed. So though it is a direct talk of Allah with his messenger, but indirectly the teaching is for the Ummah of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him, that the best way to thank the blessing of Allah is to utilize the blessings of Allah as per Allah's command and the best way to thank Allah is to share the blessings of Allah with Allah's needy creations. May Allah give us the implement all these teachings in our life and Allah make the path of Jannah easy for us. Wa akhiru da'awana an alhamdulillahi rabbil